I started out uh, with a, the idea I'd do a, a plate down the lower right hand corner of donuts or a pie or something. That's what those sketches are. And then uh, I liked more of the starkness of the thing and then decided to really uh, concentrate on that surface. At 88, artist Wayne Tebow still spends most of each day painting in his downtown Sacramento studio. It's a work ethic he picked up in his early training as a sign painter and later as a commercial artist. I didn't go to art school. Worked in commercial art and all kinds of things. And you get up, you go to work whether you like it or not. <laughs> That's uh, what I thought painters do. You get up and go to work. Having spent several decades as one of America's most recognizable and critically acclaimed visual artists, Thibaut shows no sign of resting on his laurels. His love of painting compels him to constantly create new work. The wonderful thing about painting as a human invention, it over a 30,000 year period has been able to anthologize a kind of sum of human consciousness. All of our sides, the most majestic, wonderful spiritual ideas, all the way down to the brute level of terror and horrendous inhumanity to man. And you certainly can paint anything that you want. The only problem is that it has to be good. Wayne Tebow was born in Mesa, Arizona in 1920 and started his art career in the 40s as a cartoonist and illustrator. He first gained national and international acclaim as part of the pop art movement in the early 60s. Like other pop artists, he took a closer look at humble, everyday objects. Cakes and pie, gumball machines, shoes, even lipsticks, all rendered with tactile brush strokes and a keen sense of color. But the classic feel of Thibaut's still lifes set him apart, and soon he was considered a leading figure in a new wave of 20th century figurative painters. Over the years, Thibaut's subject matter has changed, encompassing portraits and landscapes in addition to objects. Most of the imagery is drawn from his own life experiences. This came out of a lot of experiences with uh, living in San Francisco. We had a house there. The Delta pictures, the ones with the uh, rivers and lakes and so on, those come out of the Delta area. We spend a lot of time down there. The Restaurant things come out of the experience of working in restaurants. So this is a little bit of like a diary of my growing up. While the subjects of Thibaut's paintings vary, the common thread through them all is a rigorous investigation into the formal properties of painting. So a lot of the work depends on problems. It can be a problem of color, it can be a problem of light, a problem of space. Painting really can be a kind of miracle because it's a total unnatural act. Um, it ain't natural to make three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. It's, uh, it's strange, but wonderful. More than a hundred paintings from throughout Thibaut's career are assembled at his studio. He's working with his son, Matt, to make the final selections for a traveling retrospective of his work. This is all work that came back from a retrospective at Lagoon Art Museum. We're getting ready to ship things out to uh, Palm Springs Art Museum. I think in between Palm Springs it goes to uh, Utah, and then it goes from there to San Jose in 2010. Sometimes he'll rework maybe a background on something that he's seen that he wants to change. Painting for me is more of a continuing organic process. You can sort of uh, get it to a point of resolution and then open it up again. And sometimes you are bemused by the fact that you really, it didn't turn out the way you thought it would. Gee, I didn't know that uh, that little line on the dog's tongue would, would help that. I think I might have slipped first and <laughs> got this strange division of the tongue. Didn't count on that. <laughs> the only way you can feel whether a figure is operating in a space rather than attached to the edges 
is to see if you can get the damn thing to operate in that space and to locate itself. Thibault has taught painting since 1952, first at Sacramento City College, and then since 1960 at UC Davis. While officially retired, he's still a fixture of the Davis Art Department. I'd been teaching 35 years, I think, when I retired. So then I go back on a voluntary basis, but uh, since I'm working for nothing, they can't fire me anymore, and I don't have to go to faculty meetings. But then it's selfish. I get a lot out of teaching. Teaching has been very much a part of what I do. It keeps you, in some ways, uh, honest with yourself and what you're doing. If you are willing to say, I don't know, and go with a student to say, look, I can't give you any answers to anything. I can give you some tools to get at answers, to find out about answers, whether it's painting or anything else. In his lectures, Thibault emphasizes the importance of art history to any contemporary artist. I love uh, art history and love to go to museums and uh, see that another human being has painted something like Vermeer painted. If you try to find an edge in a Vermeer, on an arm or anything, you just cannot find it. He's invented, in a sense, a whole other kind of reality. It's a frozen moment in eternal time. How the world did that ever come about? It's just astonishing. In his own paintings, Thibault is continually fascinated by the qualities of light and tasks himself with conjuring them up with pigment and shape. Well, I think I'll go ahead and put in the darks and see what happens. The movements in the picture needs to be there. The sequence of, uh, of light needs to be considered. Have you included various kinds of light? Have you included, uh, let's say, glints? gleam, glow, so that the light is like the life of light in its range. If it doesn't have a lot of this visual experiences, then we run the risk of boring people. There's also a life to be lived on a level of intimacy. And that interests me a lot, where the, so to speak, where the heart is, and how we live with objects, and concerns with eating, dressing, uh, walking. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I think Robert Frost said, if I get up in the morning and uh, are able still to walk over, make my bed, all the rest of the day is gravy for me. <laughs> in a way, what keeps you going is the, the thrill of uh, experiment and, and expectation. That's what you do as a painter. You, uh, you live on hope, that next picture.